What I want to do instead is to just look at such a relationship. It tells a story. It's a simple little story, and we're gonna try to understand what it's telling us. So to begin, to begin, I want to look at the three, uh, 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 three of these uh, words. Our force, mass, and acceleration. Because I, I, I told you that a physicist approaches English language words, um, um, and then we, uh, all, all three of these are are common in English words, and then we define them very carefully. Yeah, uh, once we define them, um, you have to separate the physicist use of the word force with the usual casual language use of the word force so i could talk about how and and that that hurricane was a spectacular force of nature or we have a strong military force or if you like star wars made the force with you if the, the, there is a, a, a all a perfectly um um sorry um yeah so uh, there are all perfectly legitimate use of the the word in the English language. So to a physicist, a force means a, a push or pull. That's it, and it's a quantitative measurement of push or pull. So imagine that you are pushing on something, uh, uh, some object, and you you can feel it, and just push one hand against the other. The other, you can feel the physical force. And you could measure it. You could take a spring scale and pull down on it, and you'd see the little needle move. Uh, 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 and 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 yeah. Hmm. The, the the harder you, you need to pull, the harder you pull, uh, uh, the greater force you are applying. And um. Hmm. And 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 and. and uh, and, and the, the further the needle will move, so again, the harder you push, the greater force you are applying, and the further your needle will move, um, um, and then it's pegged, and if you want it to move further, you have to push or pull even harder still. That's right. So you can measure forces with lots of simple devices that are good forces meters, uh, including your own body. In this course, we are going to use the metric system to measure the forces and in order of Isaac Newton. We call the unit of the force the un Newton. Uh, one Newton of the force is a very gentle little push. Just touch your finger against your palm. That is one Newton. Oh, so wow. In, in the American system, the, the old uh, British system, we, we, we would use measure the force in pounds and we are used to that. And one pound is a few neutrons, and I'm going to try to stick with the neutrons, so we are used to how big this force is. Forces can be tried by anything. We, we normally think in the English language of human being applying force, but any material object can apply force. It's just a push or pro. Uh, 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 your hands can apply a force. The, the table can apply a force. My hand is pushing on the table, and, and in fact, uh, the table is pushing back on my hand. Uh, uh, we, we'll talk about that later. Um, if you put your coffee cup down on the table, these are, there are no human being involved. There are solid bodies, and they are applying force on one another. Planet Earth is applying a gravitational force downward on the coffee cup, and the table is applying an upward force preventing that coffee cup from falling down to the ground and um, uh, this coffee cup uh, and 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 and, and um, um, I'm sorry uh, the and uh, that the, the coffee cup from falling down to the ground accelerating down to the ground and uh, uh, this coffee cup example is a good one mm. Be, and, uh, um, Good one, and we will come back back to come back to the many example because when you think about forces, one of the tricks of the game is to recognize all of the forces that are acting. Mm. You you so you gonna think carefully. Some of the, some of the forces are obvious. Some of them are less obvious. There are frictional forces. Ropes can apply forces. Strings can apply forces when you squeeze them. So that that is a force idea, and we'll keep come back coming back to it. And because it takes a lot of practice to begin to recognize what force is and how big it is and what 
the, what direction it is pushing, uh, uh, that is another ingredient of the fourth story.、Mm. Uh, so, the how about mass? Mass is a part of Newton's laws of inertia. So, so, so mass is a part of New- Newton's law of inertia.、Um, it is implicit in the first law, and it was implicit in the Galileo's work. And Newton, in the second law, is now saying we need to be clearer uh, 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 about what, 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 what we mean by inertia. The, the, the word inertia in the English language means、uh, slug- sluggishness,、uh, a resistance to the change.、Mm. Um, If you have a lot of inertia, you don't want to move. And that's a statement now that we are going to attribute to material objects. All material objects have a certain resistance not to motion, but to change in motion. Nobody wants to change. So if you have a massive object, it's much more difficult to make it change in its motion. So mass,、uh, the quantity m in Fm, F equal ml, is a quantitative measure of how much inertia you have. If you have a twice as much inertia, you have twice as much mass, so we will be able to measure the mass. So, in the metric system, we will measure the mass in kilograms. One kilogram is a certain amount of mass, and when you hold an object which is labeled one kilogram, you will feel the force that is applied on you. So, it's a little bit,、uh, bit confusing, especially in America where we talk about the pounds. Sometimes we mean the force at the grocery store, and sometimes we mean the mass. So, those two things are related to one another, but they are not the same thing. We are going to have to keep the mass and the force as a separate ideas in our, ha- in our heads. Yeah. The third piece is of the Newton's law、uh, accelerations.、Um, uh, we, 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 we've already talked about. I'll just remind you that, that、uh, acceleration is a description of the motion. It's a kinematics. So if you know the acceleration, what that's telling you is the rate at which your velocity is changing. How rapidly are you speeding up or slowing down or changing the direction that you are mo- moving in? So once you know the accelerations, you directly know the change over time. Of the quantity of interest when you're measuring things. So you know where it is now, you know how its motion is changing, you can figure out where it is in the future, you can tell me where it was in the past. And so this description of the motion is often what we are after. And、uh, F equal MA,、um, uh, Newton's second law, is telling us that if you apply a force that will tell you. How much acceleration you're gonna get? There is an equal sign, so if you double the force, then you will be doubling the accelerations, assuming that you have some fixed object with a fixed mass. On the other hand, if you are st- too short to increase the mass, then you realize when you think about the formula, the more mass you got for giving a push or a pull or for giving a force, the less acceleration you are going to end up with. So, this is, a, this is a formula that ter- tells us、uh, the quantitatively and precisely how it is in that this vague idea of the inertia plays out in the real world when we are trying to、uh, understand why some things are sluggish and some things are res- responsive, re- responsive. Yeah. Wow. So great. So, Newton's second law is a story of cause and effect. Wow. Again, Newton's second law, well, which is、uh, F equal MA, MA equal、uh, F, is a story of cause and effect. Wow. So, so because.、Um, um, Um, yeah, the first is cause. Acceleration is effect. Mass is just a number. It is a relevant parameter that tells you how these things are related one to the other. It's really useful to think about Newton's laws as cause and effect because it gives you a sense of control. Wow. 
if you want a particular acceleration, you know exactly what kind of force, that, what directions and how strongly to apply it. It gives a human beings a sense that we can control the nature, we can understand the nature, predict and explain the phenomenon. This is really part of the power of Newton's second law. You don't have to understand this law completely yet. It's one of those things where on the, on the one hand it looks so simple and on the other hand you discover that there are lots of sad, sad, uh, sad, sad, uh, the, I'm sorry, there are lots of subtleties, subtleties here. Yeah, so easy to grasp the idea, easy to feel tan tangibleness. So we are going to spend some time trying to make, make sense of this. Yeah. So, um, mm. Uh, force is not a material thing. Uh, a gallon of the gasoline doesn't have some force in it. It's just sitting there. Force is a push or pull, so the gasoline would only have the force if the if the if the can were leaning up against your hand. Mm. And so force refers to interactions between objects, and this is the way we're gonna be thinking about it. It tells you uh, strengths and the direction of the interaction between the objects and that are involved. Along with uh, Newton's third law, which will come to, and the law of the gravity, which will come to, these deceptively simple relationship from the heart of the classical physics. The force concept is the quite rich and deep and it's gonna to take us some practice. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we, we, we are going to want to think about some specific example uh, where, where we try to think about the various forces involved and how it is that they cause the resulting motions. Mm. The trick, of course, arises when you got more. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. The, 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 of course, the trick, of course, arises when you have a more than one one whole force. If there is w only one force, life is a simple. Yes, you push and you object to accelerate. And F equal m a. When we have to add up a bunch of forces, then life starts to become especially interesting. Newton's law forms the basis for a realistic deterministic way of thinking about world. It's mechanical, but not in the but, but not in the superficial sense. Newton isn't saying that everything is hooked into everything else. Um, uh, he's saying it's a, it's a mechanical in abstract clockwork ten, clockwork sense. Yes. Yeah. When one thing moves, it pushes on the another. The other responds. So the world is built on cause and effect. It's very, very novel way of thinking about the world in, in the 1600s, which had enormous implications, far beyond just the direct science that was being involved. Isaac, uh, uh, Isaac Newton is clarifying the Galileo. Yep. He's telling us, yes, um, um, Galileo, uh, Galileo's idea about inertia is correct, and Galileo's ideas about relativity are correct, now we are articulate them in terms of the first law, the object in the motion remains in the motion, and the second law, the, the force equal mass times acceleration, which tells us precisely how much the change in the motion is. Isaac Newton thought very hard about these ideas. He spent uh, a year and a half really focused on these uh, beginning of their understanding motions. And I would say one of the amazing things about Isaac Newton was his ability to con concentrate. So concentration is a key. I, I can't think of another scientist, uh, scientist in, in history who has been able to focus for a year and a half almost to the exclusion of everything else, of everything else in his life. Wow. Mm. <sighs> yeah, so, so again, I can't think of another scientist in the in history who has been able to focus for a year and a half almost to the exclusion of everything, exclusion of everything, 
everything else in his life, he barely ate, he barely slept. He just did experiment and wrote and wrote and thought and calculated. It was absolutely spectacular concentration. And the benefit is that we have we have these 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 much much clearer idea after Newton than we have after 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 Newton uh, than we had before Newton about uh, what what are the quantities. Uh, 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 what are the quantities are that we are concerned with? Yeah, what are the quantities are that are going to be useful in describing the world? Mm. Isaac Newton has a single handed changed everything, this one individual and the publication of his Principia. You could ar argue that the start of the industrial revolution can be pointed back to this kind of scientific development. You might even argue with a little bit uh, stretch that things such as American political philosophical invention uh, was in part attributed to the Isaac, Isaac Newton's ideas about cause and effect, determination and control, and uh, it's, it's a fascinating idea to think about the connection of these early scientific developments and the uh, future of the uh, technical and modern world as we know it. In the next couple of lectures, we're going to be uh, looking further and deeper at the Newton's rules, and we're trying to see first of, first, of, first of all how they work, and then how they connect to astronomy and to the rest of the ordinary world. Splendid.